What's going on, everybody? So, guys, we got a dragon faction specific tournament going on. I've seen some players talking about there's no good dragon killers. And to be honest, there's not great dragon killers in these factions, but there's a few that are really good, a few that stand out, and you can definitely finish this. Now, with that said, if you're doing stage 20, I'm going to talk about the difference between stage 20 and then hard mode and which one I'm going to go for, but it's going to cost you about one to one energy for points. So about 3000 energy, you're going to get this finished out at 2750. Okay. We'll call it, I rounded it up, but the rounded up version is going to be more accurate for hard mode where you're not going to get the one to one points to energy. You're actually going to be spending more energy to finish this out. To be honest, these rewards aren't that great. The only reason why I'm, a, I'm going to do this event is because of the 3x speed speed i love speed gear i need speed gear and outside of 3x speed events dragons is kind of useless to farm now when it comes to the teams i'm going to show i'm going to be doing rich off soloing stage four though you could build them into a team and i'm going to be doing a team for stage 20 that's what i want to showcase but even more important than that you may not have any of these champions but what you do have is the ability to filter and see what champions you do have to fit these uh, fit these criteria. So we're going to go into factions, Banner Lords, High Elf, Sacred Order, and Barbarians. And then specifically, when you're looking for dragon killers, you're looking for HP burn, you're looking for poisons, specifically HP burn activations, you're looking for poisons, you're looking for max HP hits. Max HP hits are going to be helpful on normal stage 20 and below, but not so good for stage 20 and above, or say 21 and above technically, because they're going to be capped at 10% max HP. So what we're going to do is going, going to go to debuffs. We're going to go to poisons. You can do HP burn, but if you don't have Chronum or Jamarsa, specifically Chronum, then you're probably not going to be using an HP burn strategy anyways. I don't have him, so I'm just looking at poisons. So when you come in here, you're going to see Venus. Venus is an awesome poison champion. We have Richoff. I'm going to be using him in a showcase in just a moment. Cardinal, don't pay attention to her. And then Farrakhan. Farrakhan brings a poison and, or sorry, two poisons and an HP burn. Could be a very solid option. And then Rowan. You may have more options. You may have less. But look at what champions you have for poisoners. Matter of fact, I can make a plus four rich off. Not going to do that though. But look at your poisoners. This is going to give you a good idea of what you could work with. Now, there is one champion who serves the role as a poisoner, but doesn't actually bring a poison. So he's not going to come up in the list, but this is an incredible champion, Staltus. So his passive actually reflects the weaken, decreased defense, and poisons back to the dragon. Now, my Staltus specifically is dying very close to the end. So like he'll get basically all the dragon's HP gone, but then the last 10%, 20%, he's just dying. It's not very consistent for me for whatever reason. So if you have a consistent status build, let me know. Post in the comments or shoot me a message on Discord. And I'll try to pin the comment up top or post an image to it or something. But my status, he's just not cutting it. I did a video on status a while back, but for some reason, not successful. Could be the lack of blessing, but either way, I'm not going to be doing stage 10. I'm going to be soloing one of the lower stages. But before I show the soloing, let me show you this team. This team is super simple. Now, if you're somebody, before we show this team, if you're struggling with getting through the waves, you have an easy option. So we're going to go Master Vault and Reserve Vault. We're going to go Factions. And then we're going to go Debuffs again. Stun, Provoke. Either one of these are going to be excellent for getting through the waves. You can see that I have, okay, we have Archer, who brings both of those, but say specifically Stuns. You have Armands. You have Silva Drakes. You have Archmage Helmet. You have Astralon. You have a lot of champions bringing Stuns. But... If you're going to do that, make sure your Armands is not stunning if you're bringing a poison champion for the waves. If you're poisoning the waves and relying on poisons to clear it, and you're decreasing the turn meter, well, they're never going to take a turn. So your poisons are never going to activate. It makes it a terrible situation. If you're bringing Sylv the Drakes, it's not a problem. Her stun, take a turn, it's good. Armands, though, he's going to slow your run down, especially because he's taken so many turns. You can change the presets, of course, and that's up to you. I'm personally not using any presets. I'll probably just level champions up while I do this with my Richoff build. But it's something to be mindful of. If you're bringing stuns, make sure you don't have a bunch of turn meter decrease if you're relying on poisons. If you're relying on, say, Rathlos to clear the waves, it's no problem. Decrease the turn meter, everything's fine. Not a problem at all. Now, this team, I should have had the decreased defense going first before the Royal Guards did their um, AoE hits, but I didn't. Honestly, both of them are not really built that well. The one's not even crit capped. But this is just to show you the concept behind this. You can build these champions relatively low, and it's going to be fine. I mean, it's stage 20 dragon, but I'm not going to be farming this. Stage 20 dragon is more so if you're a player who, you know, is not even in hard mode yet. Stage 20 will be fine. But if you're doing hard mode, 
And the rewards from this event aren't necessarily amazing anyways, like the tournament rewards. If you're doing it, you might as well go over to hard mode, do a lower stage, where now you at least have a chance at the mythical pieces. You are going to get the event done, the tournament done, and yeah, it's just the best of both worlds. Sorry, I'm hearing some screaming upstairs and making sure everything was okay. But if you look at the stages tool in the Hellhaze website real quick, let me try to pull this up. You can actually see the drop rates. So on stage four hard, which is what I'm going to be doing, the drop rates for mythical is 0.6%. You can see all drop rates here. And if we take this to stage 10, if you could do stage 10, it's going to be a better drop rate. You have 1.6%. So a much better chance of getting mythical pieces, but it depends on if you can do stage 10 or not. I'm going to do stage four because this is where rich off is strong affinity works out pretty easily. I'll show you guys all of the stats in just a moment. The stats for the previous team, I don't really know how important it is. Also, by the way, make sure you have all um, faction-specific champions for food if you're going to do this setup as well. If not, it's just going to be a bad day for you. But if you have any interesting team that you're running for this event, let me know. Because I think it's worth doing if you're able to do hard mode and you're able to meet the faction requirements. And it's not a you know five, six-minute long run. I don't see any reason why not to do this. I mean, spend a few thousand energy over the next few days. If you're looking for speed gear, get you some speed gear. Get you a glyph, get yourself some eternal soul coins, and pick up a few extra things along the way. It's not a bad situation. Now, if you specifically want to do stage 10 and you don't care about those rewards and you only want the best of the best speed gear, then go to stage 10. Now, I could try to set up a uh, stage 10 team with Richoff, and I may actually end up doing that. But for now, I want to share this solo build because doing stage 10 would very much depend on what champions you have on your account. Matter of fact, I could use Archer, I could use Venus, I could use Cardiel and Richoff. I could probably beat it. I may actually try that at the end of this just for a little extra bonus in what I may do, but it's not re very relevant to most players. Most of you don't have Archer. Most of you probably don't have these champions. So Richoff, and this build is going to do great on hard mode. Now remember, if you can't hit this regeneration build, it's not a big deal. You can bring in Silva Drakes. It's going to slow your run down a little bit, but turn off her res during the waves, and you're never going to be resing the food champions. She's going to use her A2 to stun the waves. No term meter decrease except from the A1. Could make things a little bit slower, but it's going to be more consistent. If you have the Archer Queen, it's even easier for you. She brings heals, hex, provoke, all kinds of decreased speed. It's going to be a lot easier for you if you have these champions running alongside Richoff, or if you can't hit this regeneration build stat requirements. They're not insanely high, but they're also not, hey, you've been farming regeneration from Fire Knight for two weeks, you got this gear. No, you're not going to have the gear. But a minute 52... Not bad whatsoever. Let's go take a look at his build. I have no blessings. Blessings would make a big difference. I have regen plus immortal. You may not have to go that, but that's what I've gone with. Dragon's Lair, we have 82,000 HP, 3,500 defense, 240 speed. Resistance and accuracy is important, but for this stage specifically, we don't need super crazy numbers. So we need resistance of 345 and accuracy of 255. So it's decent, but it's not horrendously high like stage 10 would be for example i'm not sold on stage 10 and honestly the next stage of hard i can't solo that either i don't think maybe i can look at it the next four stage that is he's strong affinity versus force so weapon helmet shield and then we have the gloves the chest plate and the boots so we got some good stats on here not everything's awakened this is a five star banner so there's definitely some room to improve these are the masteries that i'm using here now for the previous team this one is not that important, honestly, as far as the builds and the stats. Like, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this. The Stage 20 team, you can build this and make a better team and a faster team, probably, with the champions you have and just playing around that stuff. Just knowing, hey, the goal is to get through the waves, get to the boss, and then nuke it down. Honestly, the Ruler Guards weren't even needed. Rathalos did more than enough damage to kill that boss. Now, with that said, this team has no presets, so we can easily swap out the food. Make sure, though, you're using faction-specific food. But if I want to go into stage 10, actually, this is not going to work. Stage 8, stage 4 is where I will be farming. Stage 8, no, not going to do this. Because look, Plarium, like, specifically counter Rich off with these daggone bad L's. Bad L's going to cleanse, make my life miserable. I'm not going to do that. Absolutely not. Bad L cleansing, it's a horrible situation if you have no lockout stuff. But let's go into stage 10 real quick. So with stage 10, if I want to build a team around this, I was starting to earlier, but let's see. We're gonna go with Richoff for sure. But I wanna go, I wanna go Archer Queen. Archer Queen, Richoff, Venus. So we have three champs who are gonna do very well. We'll throw in the Staltus as well. And then I may need a healer 
let's go cardio honestly this is not a team where most people are gonna you know have access to but maybe you do and if you do that's fantastic so with rich off i'll actually turn off this a2 ability i do have him fully booked it did make a decent difference because going into that second wave with oppressor mastery he's able to actually get the a2 off quicker placing the poisons essentially boosting his term meter fill so that all happens quicker and it's definitely worth it but for this run we're just going to let it go in as it is. Cardio could adjust his blessings. If this is relatively quick, not his blessings, his uh, presets. If this is relatively fast, I may actually do that. But for now, we'll just leave it as it is. So the archer places her stuff. We're going to kill him relatively quick. But it's still going it to... May, it may be... If it's around two minutes, I may actually run this team instead. But if it's, like, much more than that, I'm not going to run it. Honestly, it may be okay. Stoutless is going to do fantastic. Fill up that debuff bar. My cardio is built for damage, so maybe this is the team I actually end up using. I wasn't even thinking about this necessarily, but stage 10, this is getting the best of both worlds for me. Getting stage 10. We're not doing the food farming, which to be honest, with the upcoming Loki Asgard Divide events, there's probably going to be a champion training tournament with that. So you may want to start your journey of leveling up food champions and stocking up your stockpile, stacking up your stockpile so that you could be ready for one of those events, just like the Archer tournament months ago, right? Something you may want to be considering doing. So saving your books, if it's a champion training tournament. Saving your brews, especially. Saving your four-star and five-star champions. So there we go. All those reflected from Stoutus. So we got a big bunch of poisons there, which is fantastic. The ally attack's not doing anything because it's just not going to help. Ally attack with this team is useless, basically. We do get quite a bit of heals, though, because the archer hitting into a hex enemy. A hexed enemy, that is. But, to be honest, um, once we start falling, it's going to be just bad news. Honestly, Richoff is not really needed here. Unless Stoutus goes down, Richoff is kind of useless, because the, the debuff bar is full. But it's more so just like, maybe he can survive and sustain. We got, we got very lucky with the uh, revival and death there. But at this point, I may actually need to throw in Rathlos over uh, uh, what's his name? I was about to say Roshkard over um, Richoff. Let's see. Rathlos over him. Because, I mean, Cardiel's ally attack could make it even better. And he's going to get more turns, so he's going to be getting his passive and all of his abilities worked up better. We'll see how this plays out. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But I, I may actually do Sage 10. I'm going to do some farming here. My Cardiel's built like 279 speed and Savage and some good damage. I was going to try him out in Hydra. Archer is built 220 speed and Slayer gear. Venus is in Cursed. Stoutus is in the Stone Skin you already saw. And then Rath or, yeah, Rathlos is in Relentless gear. This may actually be the team. Because he's going to hit the boss and not be capped by the max HP damage anyways. So we're going to be good there. He can do some good damage. You already saw it in the previous dragon. He's doing far more than the Royal Guards. So while he's not a poison champion, he is a very good boss killer. Just his kit is made for boss killing. Not as good as a Newt, of course, but hey, it works pretty well. Especially if you have these conditions. I mean, the AoE hit wipes the waves out no problem. And now on the actual boss here, we have an HP burn champion. We have the weekend. We have all the conditions needed for him to work, assuming we can get those debuffs placed. But we also got a lot of poisons on myself, so we're going to see how this actually plays out. Maybe good, maybe not. Who knows? We have full debuff bar stacked up. Let's see if he actually does anything big here. We'd love to see the HP burn come out as well, boosting his damage. But if you have Rathlos, he's most likely going to be into, into some of your teams, I'm sure. If, assuming you have Stoutless or like a different poison champion, he can easily fit. Not going to be the most tanky, but he could possibly fit. HP burn and weaken on the dragon now. He's not hitting for crazy high numbers. But hey, it's okay. Finished it off. He didn't die. Two million damage. I don't know. I don't know what the other people did the other time, but this worked out fine. So it may actually end up using this team for a little bit longer and trying out Stoutus with some different builds. So real quickly, this is Venus. This is Rathalos. This is Cardiel. This is the Archer Queen. And this is Stoutus. There we go. And Richoff, you already saw him. So there we go, guys. Let me know if you have any new, interesting, exciting builds. Definitely interested in that. 
let me see what happens here. I'm gonna actually go in wave two, turn off cardio stuff. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I'll have him open with that and then prioritize this. So this make it a little bit faster, I'm sure. Um, we'll have him, it's a three turn cooldown. I don't know what he is compared to, okay, so she opens and then don't use. I can set up all these presets to make it, you know, better. Actually, have that doesn't really matter, honestly. We'll have him open, then don't use, and then, yeah, see how that stuff works. So make him a little bit quicker on the wave killing, wave clearing and stuff. Archer, I can get her set up to stun everybody or something and get to the boss quicker, do it overall faster. Not much blessings, but Brimstone would be amazing. I'm going to run this one more time, though. Brimstone would be amazing. Crushing Rend, if you had it on some champions, could be very good as well. I don't have any Brimstone that I want to switch anybody to, so... We're fine where we're at. Having the archer not use both AOE skills would be beneficial. We don't need to provoke and a stun. And a decrease speed, all that kind of stuff. Way too much control, basically, if that was ever a thing. But this will probably be the team that I run. If I want to do Rich Off solo, I'll do that. If I want to do just Dragon 10, I'll do this. Not for sure which one I want to do, honestly. I guess it depends on how I'm around my computer and how quickly I finish it because this team's obviously going to finish it, well, it's going to finish it a little bit faster. Not significantly because the Rich Off Soul is actually pretty quick. This one's about a minute, less than a minute and a half, wasn't it, I think? Somewhere around there. But I fixed the presets, so it should be even faster now. I could turn off Rathalos' A2 ability possibly and save it for the boss. Could do that. Let's see. So we get the decreased defense up. There we go. Decrease defense. Rathalos is dead. Not that much of a surprise, honestly. I guess he got killed by his extra turn poisons. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Let's see. The Rathalos set got him. We could use Cardiel opening, opening with the A2 ability. But Stoutus, he is he's fantastic. Like He's going to basically secure this because he's reflecting so much stuff back. So it's not too bad. But all right, guys, there we go. That's the video. That's the teams I'm going to be using. I'm going for this event, obviously. I think it's worth going for it if you can. Um, champion training, Heroes Path tomorrow. Maybe you want to wait until then to actually do it. I don't think we got any news about what it's going to be, do we? Maybe we do. Let's see. Heroes Path. Uh, summon champions from shards and get artifacts and accessories. Okay, so maybe wait till tomorrow, actually. Get artifacts and accessories. So a lot of farming. Yeah, might as well just wait until tomorrow, honestly. Got some good stuff. If you're going for the Scored Soul, might as well do that, right? Might as well do that. So, guys, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. Best of luck in these events and this farming stuff. Let me know which teams you're using. Let me know what your plans are. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.